It's hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Keith McNally, who is over in Southern Virginia on, on Hurricane Watch. How are you doing, Dr. Keith? <laughs> I'm doing fine, sir. It's good to be here. Yes, at the time of this recording, Idalia is creeping up the Gulf. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had it here in San Diego. We had it uh, a couple of weeks ago, and thankfully, it didn't really. To be honest, at the end of the day, the the tropical storm was like a, a rainy day in the west of Ireland, so it didn't turn out that bad. <laughs> so, hopefully, you have the same experience. <laughs> I hope. I hope. But mm. it's hurricane season, so we're preparing for what's to come. Absolutely. And uh, Dr. Keith is a leadership coach specializing in facilitating discussions by bringing like-minded people together to create real impact. Uh, you've launched uh, two podcasts in the last year, the Question Guy podcast and Coach's Corner. And you're also the author of Walking the Path, A Leader's Journey. And, and, what we're, and you're also the U.S. ambassador for Be Happy for Nothing, an international nonprofit focused on improving the lives of millions by ensuring their basic needs are met and you seek to change the conversation around mental health and personal well-being what we're going to talk about today is walking the path and a leader's journey so yeah and there you go there's the book uh, excellent uh, available at all good uh, booksellers uh tell me this uh dr K K just give me the genesis and the background to the book and then we'll dive into the book sure um about two years ago uh, I was talking with a colleague of mine in uh, out in California, and we were just kind of going over all of our you know pros and cons of what we've been doing in life. And he had some credentials that I did not. And he said, "You don't have a book yet?" And I said, "No, I don't have a book." And the reason that's so important is because I'm 54. I just turned 54 uh, last week. And he says, "You need a book." And I said, "Well, I don't know what to write about." And so I went back to my mentor. And he said, well, you tell lots of stories. And so we kind of worked out some ideas and then uh, this came into being. And originally it was a training manual on leadership because uh, my colleague had written some, some uh, books on leadership. And I said, well, I need to kind of get into that space. And then after we were, then we we're gonna kind of, you know, co-author a book and he kind of bailed out because of time. Uh, time mm -hmm. limitations, but then it was just like, I got to do this. I got to get this done. And so mm -hmm. uh, I said, well, let me, let me tackle this on my own. And so I took what, you know, my part of the co-authored book was going to be, and I had some backstory and then some more of the story. And so I eventually came up with, with this. And so this is a part fable, part uh, leadership context. Uh, part journal, because there's parts where you actually write mm -hmm. in the book. And there's um, some Q&A, because I want the reader to go back into the book and really think about what was introduced, both in terms of context, whether it be mentoring or communication or vulnerability, um, and how it related back to the story. So that's really the genesis of, of why this is and how it came into being. Yeah. And and you and as I say, you used a, a, a story format. Tell me what, why you chose that format in particular. It was it seemed innate in me just to kind of um, really tell the story in terms of character. Because I, for me, if I were just talk about leadership concepts or you know how to do this and how mm -hmm. to do that, make it. I didn't want to make it academic. I, I really didn't want to look at this and say, oh, that's just another textbook that we could use at a community college. I felt it more than just that. Mm -hmm. So I wanted it to be relatable. So I uh, applied uh, different types of characters. They're all young, except for one main character who's kind of the mentor of the group. Right. Uh, and I wanted people to really, when they were reading it, is to see either the, see themselves in the storyline or identify with one of the characters or maybe more than one because i really mm -hmm. looked deep into my subconscious and said who are the pieces of me that are developing at this time and so this was written back in uh right. 2020 2021 2022 and published in 2022 and so i really wanted them to relate to 
the story elements. Right. And one of the things I've noticed here, you, you talk about uh, uh, in leadership, the, the power of reflection, of writing, of knowing. Um, I, I, it's one of the things that I often talk about to people here is I, I believe we live in a such a distracted world today. Like people think they're busier than ever, but they're not really. They're just more distracted than they've ever been. Uh, so that idea of, of reflection, of writing things down, of even even taking that time out, it almost seems anathema to the to the world we've created. Yeah, yeah. So I, I totally agree with that. So uh, quite honestly, you know, there's one of the pages. It says, take note, quite literally, mm -hmm. take note. Go back in. And for those who have read it and those who have come back to me and say, this is one of the books that I'm giving to people that I know because they need to read it. Some mm -hmm. have read it more than once already. And they go back and every time it's like when I go back and read a book, you're picking up something new, you're picking up a new nugget of gold, you're picking up uh, a new aspect of wisdom or something that you haven't thought of before, or maybe even how it's applied in the story. And so with all of that, I wanted the reader to stop, ask the questions themselves, answer the questions and then write their thoughts down if not in this book you know go buy a journal or go create a journal uh, a notepad a notebook mm -hmm. either way pick up a pen pick up a piece of paper yeah. and write your thoughts down because that's where the real impact that's where the real turnaround is going to take place in your life because you put something into action yeah, and there's a, and it's funny how there's a, there's the, there's research around that just the writing down part even in itself you know how that is uh, it's funny my son's 18 and about a year ago or when he first started college you know he was talking to me about something and he said you always use those these notebooks and I said yeah I said I put to do lists on them and I said to be honest if it doesn't go in the notebook it ain't getting done <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> And and I said, there's something psychologically about going back, crossing things out and doing it, whatever. <clears throat> and so I gave him one of my books and he uses it now, even though he's a, you know, a full on digital native. He still he writes down a to do list in his notebook. So, yeah, uh, I, I love the fact that I actually keep a couple of different journals. So uh, mm -hmm. I have one just for exercise. I'm a big exercise fanatic. And so right. everything I do daily, walking, whatever that is. Uh, of course, my schedule is digital, but it's also manual. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you said, you, you got to, you know, just do things match up when what can I actually literally check off the list and say, yeah, I've done this and I'm proud of it. And think about now, well, what came out of, you know, doing that? And a lot of my things, of course, are conversations that are not always mm -hmm. in a podcast format. But I have conversations right. with people all the time about their well-being and their purpose and giving them permission to achieve their goals, whatever that may be. And when you start, you know, you pick up the pen. Here's mine right here. Yeah. When you pick it up yeah. and I said, I need you to write that. And I literally say, I need you to write <laughs> this down, write this down and I'll write it with them so they don't, they don't feel weird mm -hmm. or awkward, you know, because here's, here's my pen. I got pen, paper. Yeah. And let's write it down together. Let's make action items and then let's make things happen. And then as we make things happen, we could check them off. We could cross them out. Yeah. But we feel good because we see the accomplishment and we know the accomplishment in our head. So then um, tell me a little bit about the about uh, your journey, about the, the traits of leadership as you see it. What are what are the what are the core elements of, of truly successful, impactful leaders? So in the book, I talk about six elements and I call them mm -hmm. uh, the six elements of socially conscious leadership. And so I talk about things such as sustainability and accomplishments and communication styles and alignment mm -hmm. and values. And so when we put all of these things together, they create the persona, the person of leadership. But I also imply that in the book, although leadership is implied as of leading others to do mm -hmm. something, to accomplish a task, and they do, the goal of the book is to find a place for these people to live because they've been ostracized by mm -hmm. 
by their community. And so they have to go find, literally climb the mountain, walking mm-hmm. the path of leader's journey. They have to go climb the mountain and find a place to live. But that he, John had to do it in a way that was going to cause everybody to be successful. It was the daily learning. How do I tell somebody? How do, how do I become vulnerable, vulnerable and say, you know, I don't, I don't feel like I belong here. And that's sometimes difficult for us to say because we want to fit mm-hmm. in to where we, yep. where we live. And John mm-hmm. has to say, I don't, I don't feel like I belong here. And then when he is able to literally verbalize that, his friends are able to say, yeah, you know, I kind of feel the same way. And so he builds trust, he builds rapport, and then he takes them on the journey. And that is so critical. And even in the book, There's a journal within the journal because there's actually a journal that has been passed down through generations that John acquires in order for him to help him understand all of the turmoil and the questions and the uncertainty and the fear that are going on in his life because he's 17 going on 18, Mm -hmm. but he's also got to take on the journey of going into the unknown, you know, the metaphorical mountain, but in this case, the real mountain for these people. Mm -hmm. And why do you say that, I see the chapter heading uh, uncertainty, because you just mentioned it there, but you said uncertainty is not a feeling. That's right. Uh, And sir, by basic definition, it's not, it's a thought. Um, You are not Mm -hmm. sure of what is to come. Now, the reason that's important is because John's mentor, Jose, really wanted John to get in touch with his emotions because without doing that, without being his authentic self, he's going to make rash and inappropriate, maybe even harmful decisions if he makes them without really understanding his whole self. So I wanted the character and those who are reading the book to align their thoughts with their feelings, with their actions, if you're a spiritual person, I kind of talk about that in the book, but mm-hmm. uh, I don't o- overemphasize it. You know, all of those things, how he interacts socially, how he's going to support himself. Um, you know, in this case, there isn't the, the idea of money, but there is the idea of uh, a service supports another service. And they're all hunters right. and, and fishermen and tradesmen and things like that. So he has skill sets that he can use. And each of the characters brings a different skill set into the team. So being uncertain is okay. But to say, well, I'm afraid, that's an entirely different thing. Right. And it's okay to be afraid. You just have to verbalize it and own it. Because we could deal with that. You know, we could deal with the mm-hmm. fear equally as well as we could deal with the unknowing. But it's the fear that's going to cause the action. It's not the unknowing that's going to cause the action. And we have to be really right. clear because he's going to lead a team that he understands his emotions. Yeah, that's that's um, that's fascinating. And you mentioned the authenticity there, and I think that's a word that's well, and it's been thrown around all over the place now. People love to talk about, oh, yeah, you know, be your authentic self. People want to deal with all. And it almost sounds inauthentic the way a lot of people are talking about how to be authentic. But what is authenticity? When you're being your authentic self, what does that really mean? When you're authentic, you show up as you. Now, I'll give you an an example of how this works and I'll apply it to me, my situation Mm -hmm. so that you have a clear idea and your audience has a, has a clear idea as to what I'm kind of impressing here. LinkedIn is a social media platform. It's a professional platform. When the quarantine and COVID hit, you know, Mm -hmm. we got locked down and the only way we really knew people was through an image, whatever professional pic they, you know, gave to the platform and their profile, which is typically resumes or accomplishments or Mm -hmm. whatever that would be. I went out and started knocking on people's virtual door. I just started connecting with people, meaning uh, for those who I was connected with about a couple thousand, 
I just asked them, would you like to have conversation over Zoom? Let's jump on a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. Now, at that time, this was, you know, what, 2020? So we're talking three, almost four years ago. Mm -hmm. More people than that were, were turning me down. But the people that said yes were the people that saw who they were in the mirror because now we were forced to confront ourselves right and didn't like what they saw they didn't like they they climbed the corporate ladder or the reverse was true they lost houses monies loved ones spouses whatever that was they were now confronted with themselves they had to learn and become authentic they had to become real with what they saw in the mirror Mm -hmm. And then what they did when they had conversations with me is they told me their stories. So earlier you read my bio. That's yeah. where the Question Guy podcast came from. Those personal stories that people were sharing with me. You know, we've shared, I've shared tears with people because yeah. they've lost so much. And then they made intentional pivots in their life to transform because they no longer wanted to be this ideal of what they thought they should be. They wanted to be honest with themselves. They wanted to live a life that was of value, of purpose to them first. They needed to right. find what that was and then reincarnate, maybe manifest whatever the words you choose to use, that personal self. And some of them used it to transform their professional lives. So they became coaches mm -hmm. or speakers, but it, be, it came from that transformation, it came from the power within because they knew things had to be different and they made things different. Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, what's really fascinating about that is because, uh, as you said, I mean, these may, some of these may be people who are, you know, on great careers, on great, you know, from the outside on great journeys. But I guess it's that inherent sense of like discontent despite the fact that things are going in what looks like a good direction for you yeah. but there's that discontent that seems in incongruent with with that stage of your journey somehow yeah so discontent and i was thinking of you know the word uh, you, there's a lack of alignment you know because yeah. they were then is this really me you know are these really my values you know we always we tend to want to look good on paper so we write these awesome mm -hmm. resumes create create these cr great you know linkedin profiles or whatever that looks like on paper so that we can show our best self but a lot of times what's inside <laughs> isn't mirroring yeah. what they're showing us and so more and more people were saying i wanted those two that which i'm showing people and that which I am, I wanted them to be in alignment. And so they were making it happen. And those are the conversations that I was having. And so, and I've talked with, so far I've done three seasons of 40 episodes each of the question guys. Nice. So it's 120 conversations I've had around the idea of pivoting, aligning purpose and value personally than professionally. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, no, and I think it's, I, I, I think it's absolutely fascinating because I mean, I can think of my own um, journey myself. I think when you look at, especially as maybe you go from, you know, different industries, different circumstances and people say, well, how can you do that? And you say, well, once you establish who, you know, once you establish who you truly are and how you, how you best operate, you can pretty much contribute anywhere. I, I think so. I think because you know your origin story you know mm -hmm. uh your direction and once you start and and this again stories are so powerful here is because i've known people to step into the speaking industry mm -hmm. as non-speakers so i'm talking about people who are just shy closed off you know no way am i getting on stage mm -hmm when you start telling your story or the story that you want to tell that story that births change that births empowerment that creates a new reality you begin to own it 
you lose the imposter syndrome. You own your story. You will begin to immerse yourself in that story. And then that story grows out of you. It becomes more. It's not only just your origin story. It may be the transformation story. And I could tell you a story that I heard uh, about a lady who went on a retreat and she had to walk over hot burning coals right? mm-hmm. for a week long retreat. And this is part of my, one of my talks. And all week long, she had to walk over 10 feet of hot burning coals. Right. And then the final day, it's 40 feet long. So it's this massive mm-hmm. stretch of hot burning coals. And the way she tells the story is that she steps up to the start line and she can't do it. She can't move the foot. And then one of the participants said, didn't you do this all week long? Didn't you walk over 10 feet of hot burning coals? And she said, yeah. He said, you could do this. He gave her permission. He broke down the barrier, the mental barrier, Mm -hmm. the mental fear, the unknown. I talk about the same stuff. This is a book about permission. This is a book about giving yourself permission to go into the unknown and find out what that's all about. And then when you do, and you do it daily, you own it. It's yours. Mm. And you're you're empowered. Man, that's fantastic. What a great place uh, to end. I, I love how you just wrapped everything up there perfectly. I love that, giving yourself permission. Um, so uh, all of Dr. Heath's information to be below this video includes link to the book and all of that. And I really encourage you to go check it out uh, because, I mean, life's too short, isn't it? You got one shot at this, you know, you might as well give it, put your best foot forward as yourself. As I said, all of Dr. Keith's information will be below here. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Currently, I am a multi-podcast host. And so <laughs> I always ask people, join me in conversation. Tell your story. The Question Guy podcast is really about your personal story and more focused on your personal transformation, whatever that is. Um, if you run a small business and you want to talk about how you impact people professionally Mm -hmm. coaches corner i've just started the envision speaker series and so the envision speaker series is a legitimate podcast now it's going out on simplecast and it gets published to all of your major platforms whereas the other two kind of sit on my youtube channel but subscribers welcome the envision speaker series is about people's psychological and emotional well-being and i have panel member discussions. We talk about health, wellness, what it means to put your best foot forward, what it means to live your best life now. Uh, My first episode, the first conversation was about men's mental health and suicide Mm -hmm. prevention. And we're just going to keep on going with, you know, what what does it mean to be healthy? And how do I live a healthy life now? I would love to have that conversation with your audience as well. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, as I said, all the links below, please go check it out. Uh, You know, we're on this journey, we can use every little bit of insight and wisdom that we can get along the way to help us. So thanks again, uh, Keith, thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank Thank you, sir. Thank you.